Hello guys, I'm back. In this video, I will teach you step by step how to perform net positive suction head calculation on Excel spreadsheet and also on Aspen High Seas. My name is Jefferson Costa and I teach students, graduates and engineers how to work with chemical process engineering and plant design on my social media and also in my in-process booster training program. If you want to work with chemical process engineering and plant design, Knowing how to perform NPSH calculation is mandatory because this is one of the variables that we use to select the correct pump. That said, I will cover 80 topics on this video and what is most important, stay with me up to the end because I will tell you how you can get this presentation, also the Excel spreadsheet that I will use to solve the examples and also the access file that I will use to solve the NPSH calculation on Aspen High Seas. To start with, it's very important that you understand how is the operation of a pump before we go to the NPSH calculations. So, the pump is an equipment used to build pressure on liquids, and because of that, we don't want to have vapors. But what happens in the operation? We go with the fluid at the suction, of a pump, and in this case, we are considering the nozzle of the pump. And when the fluid goes in, in the pump impeller, we have a decrease on its pressure. And if the pressure inside the pump goes below the fluid vapor pressure, we can have a formation of vapor. And that will lead to cavitation. Because as we go to the higher pressure side of the pump, these bubbles will collapse and we will finally have at the discharge of the pump the discharge pressure. So to avoid the, cavita the cavitation effect, we must guarantee that the NPSH available in the pump, in the suction of the pump, is higher than the NPSH required by the pump. The NPSH required is des it's designed and defined by the manufacturer, by the supplier, and the NPSH available is calculated and defined by the chemical process engineer. Although the NPSH required can be calculated or estimated based on this equation here, in fact, we don't worry about that because the NPSH required is an information shown in the pump curve. So in this pump curve here, from a real pump, you can see the flow by the pump head, so as I increase the flow of the fluid, the volumetric flow, I decrease the pump head. And as I increase the pump flow, I increase the NPSH required. So this NPSH here, although I don't have the nomenclature or the identification as required, in fact, every time that you see a pump curve and there is a NPSH, it is the NPSH required. So we match the pump points in terms of flow and head, and we go to the NPSH and verify what is the NPSH required. So in this case, we have around three meters of NPSH required. Moreover, it's common to have in the pump curve, the efficiency curve and also the shaft power curve. So with all of this information, we will select the correct pump based on the process conditions. These process conditions are filled in a specification data sheet in order that we are able to purchase the correct pump. So the, one of the activities and roles of a chemical process engineer is to give to mechanical engineer the information related to the operating conditions, where we have many information here that I cover in my process booster training program, but here, what's important to you identify is that the NPSH available is one of the information that is mandatory to have in the specification data sheet. Here you can see it in Portuguese, so it is the NPSH disponible is the same as the NPSH available. Verify that in this case, the NPSH available is 6 meters. So, Based on that, if we have the NPSH available higher than the NPSH required, we will avoid cavitation, and based on that, we will avoid damage in the impeller or damage in the pump. 
And another effect of the pump cavitation is the reduction of the head, reduction of efficiency, and there is a lot of troubles when we have cavitation in the pump. So our target as chemical process engineers working with plan design is to avoid cavitation, is to add to the equipment engineer information to be filled in the specification data sheet and based on that, select the correct pump. So to be able to do that, we need to know how to perform the NPSH calculation. The equation used to NPSH calculation can be shown in different forms depending on the author that you are looking for. Here I will present you two different forms and I will use the uh, simplest one. The NPSH available is a function of the pressure above the liquid in the feed vessel plus or minus the H of liquid above the pump suction minus the pressure loss in the suction pipe because in this case, we are considering a distance between the vessel and the suction of the, the pump. And we need to discount also the vapor pressure of the liquid at the pumps, pump suction at the operating conditions of pressure and of temperature. In fact, of temperature, because the vapor pressure is a function of temperature. And with that, we to get all the variables as length, we divided the pressure parts or the pressure parameters of this equation by uh, mass density multiplied by acceleration gravity. So this is the complete equation for the NPSH available, but I prefer that you use and you, you get into your mind this one, that the NPSH available is a calculation uh, related to the absolute pressure at the pump, pump suction that take into account the barometric pressure plus the manometric pressure minus the vapor pressure at the suction pump, the pump suction divided by the mass density of the fluid multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. So this way we have the basic calculation for the NPSH available and I will show you two examples and more, moreover, I will show you how to perform this calculation on Aspen High Seas. In this first example, let's consider a reservoir below the pump elevation. So in this case, we have a water pump where we need to pump uh, water that is at 30 Celsius degree and the atmospheric pressure at the location is 101 kilopascal. At this temperature, the vapor pressure of water is 4.2 kilopascal and the mass, mass density of the water at 30 Celsius degree and on this local pressure is one, uh, 995 kilograms per cubic meter. So we, based on that, we need to calculate the NPSH available. Some other information that are important to our calculations is the length of the surface of the, the liquid because here we have 3.6 meters and it doesn't matter how far the suction goes because we start our calculations we will start our manometric pressure based on the surface level of the, the fluid and we have here the losses related to the piping so it is 0 0.6 meters of water column so these are the basic information to perform the NPSH available in a spreadsheet based on an uh, example available in the rule of thumb for chemical process engineers. So here we have the example with the process information, we have the resolution, but let's see how to perform that on an uh, Excel spreadsheet. So first of all, I need to know what is the equation needed to perform the calculations. We have here the NPSH available is a function of absolute pressure at the suction of the pump minus the vapor pressure of the fluid divided by the mass density multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. So the barometric pressure is a function of the elevation of the location. As higher you go in the elevation, a smaller will be the atmospheric pressure. But as we have in the exercise, in this case, we have 101 kilopascal. 
The acceleration of gravity is a constant, so we have 9.81 meters per second square. This is the acceleration of gravity in the planet Earth, where we live. We have here information related to temperature. It is not used uh, directly in the calculation, but the, we depend on the process conditions of temperature to define what is the vapor pressure of the fluid and also the mass density of the fluid. Here, in this case, we don't have manometric pressure, and because of that, I will let it as zero. Just to remind you, absolute pressure is a summing up of barometric pressure plus manometric pressure. That's not the case. The vapor pressure, it is given the exercise, it is 4.2 kilopascal, and the mass density is also given in the exercise 995 kilograms per cubic meter. Here, I will also add the mass density of water because you will see in the second exercise that it can give you, it can lead you to different results. So, this is the basic information related to the process conditions. Verify that I calculated the specific gravity here. All the fields in orange is calculated, all the fields in light blue is input. So, I will add now the elevation in here, it's the important point. As my elevation is below the pump suction, I will define it as minus, minus 3.6 meters. This is very important. And at the right side of the elevation change, I have the calculation of the in terms of pressure. So this is minus 35.1 kilopascal. And I have the pressure drop in, ter in terms of length of, of water here, 0.6, that I will transform to uh, in terms of pressure. So I can verify here what is in terms of pressure, and my calculation will lead to the inlet pressure in terms of length and the vapor pressure in terms of length. To transform length in pressure, we just need to multiply the length by the mass density of the fluid multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. Here, I am dividing this number because we are considering kilopascals. So, as I use in kilopascals, I need to divide by 1,000. To do the opposite, to get the inlet pressure as a function of meters, I will get the pressure, divide it by the mass of density, multiplied by the acceleration of gravity, and in this case, I will multiply by 1000 because now I am using kilopascal. So, just to let all the the units of measurement at the same basis, I need to multiply by 1000. And the vapor pressure is the same. I get the vapor pressure and I divide it by the mass density multiplied by the acceleration of gravity and multiply by 1000 to have it in meters. And the NPSH available will just be the inlet pressure in terms of length minus the vapor pressure and with that, I have 5.7 meters. That is very similar. That's the same information that we have in the exercise. In the PSH available as 5.7 meters. Let's take a look now in the second example where we have a fluid different than water. So, in this case, we have a receiver above pump elevation or above pump suction. This is a pressure vessel because we have here 258 kilopascal G. This G means that is manometric pressure. Besides that, we have information related to temperature, 38 Celsius degree, and butane, and we have a H of column of liquid of 2.4 meters, and a very important information is the friction losses between the vessel and the pump suction, that is 0.9 meters of water column. This is very important to observe because we need to do some adjustments to get the NPSH available calculation. So, based on the, those information, we have that the N-butane vapor pressure is 356 kilopascal, 
and we have the specific gravity of n butane at 38 Celsius degree as 0 0.656. These are information that was not available in the previous exercise, but you will see how to handle that on this exercise. The spreadsheet is basically the same from the previous exercise. We need to set the barometric pressure of the, the ambient. We need to set the acceleration of gravity that is constant. As we don't have any information related to barometric pressure, we will consider that it is the same as the previous one. We have the temperature of uh, operating, pre operating temperature of the fluid. And in this case, we have the uh, a, a pressure at the above of the H of the liquid. That is 258 kilopascal. And the vapor pressure in this case is 356 kilopascal. And now we need to convert the specific gravity of butane to the mass density because it is the mass density that is used to perform the calculations. In this case, for this temperature and this pressure, the specific gravity of the butane is 0 0.56 and not 0 0.59 as shown in the drawing. It is not correct if you verify the calculation just below here, you will verify that the author is using 0 0.56 specific gravity and we need to inform the mass uh, mass density of water because what is the specific gravity is the, the is the ratio between the mass density of the liquid divided divided by the mass density of the water as i don't have any information related to that let's consider also in this case the same mass density as 30 celsius degree this is not the best number, but just for preliminary calculation, it can work. And now we need to add the elevation. And now as the elevation is above the pump suction, we we'll consider it as positive. So I will not use negative and it is 2.4 meters. Another thing that is important to understand is that the pressure drop was done, was informed in uh, weight of water. And to convert that to pressure drop in terms of H of butane, we need to divide the pressure drop by the specific gravity of the fluid. So this was the, the only adjustment that I did in this spreadsheet, in the example two. And based on that, I did the correction also of the mass density because in the exercise one, we fill it, it straight to the spreadsheet. And now I did the calculation based on the specific gravity. If you already have the specific, the mass density of the fluid, you can use it, go ahead and just adjust the calculation to have the specific gravity if you want to. So, in the inlet pressure will be 363.3 kilopascal. Converting that to inlet pressure, verify that we need to get the inlet pressure divided by the mass density, multiplied by acceleration of gravity, multiplied by 1000, and we have these in meters. And the vapor pressure is very close to the inlet pressure, leading to a NPSH available of 1.3 meters that is very very similar to the one in the exercise that is 1.4 meters uh, concluding that the calculation is okay and it's just a matter of rounding numbers so with this we perform the second calculation and you verify the how easy it is to perform the NPSH calculation but in real world, what happens in the real life of a chemical process engineer, your boys will not give you the friction losses. Your boys will not give you what is the age of the liquid because these are uh, defined by the chemical process engineer. This is defined by you as a chemical process engineer that wants to work with chemical process engineer in plant design. So based on this, I will use the second example to perform the calculations on Aspen High Seas.
On Aspen High Seas, you will verify that the equation to NPSH available calculation is a little bit different than the one that we have seen before. We have the inlet pressure at the suction of the pump minus the vapor pressure divided by uh, mass density of the fluid multiplied by its acceleration of gravity. This is the same one that we have uh, before, but now we have the addition of uh, velocity square divided by two times the acceleration of gravity. This term is related to the dynamic pressure. We will verify what is the effect of this. As you can see, if it is uh, an addition, it will increase the NPSH available and the information to perform the calculation will be the same as the second example where we have n butane, 2.4 meters of column of liquid, 258 kilopascal kilo manometric, and we have the friction losses. So let's go to the Aspen High Seas and verify how to solve this. By the way, if you get this far, it's time to subscribe to my channel and activate the notifications to be up to date to chemical process engineering and plant design. On Aspen High Seas, you have basically two different ways to perform NPSH calculations. The first one is the standard one where you just need to click in an option and it will calculate to you. And the other one is very similar to the previous calculation that we, we, have, we had performed. I will teach you both of them on this exercise. So it's important to understand that the Aspen High Seas do not take into account the age of liquid the level of liquid in the storage vessel or in a vessel separator. Because of that, all the liquid that I will be considering in this exercise must be added in a pipe segment. Moreover, I need to add the friction losses that was informed in the exercise. And because of that, I, need, I added a control valve, a valve in fact, just to be able to add the information of friction losses. So the first part is if you are not familiar with Aspen High Seas, you can take a look on how to start your process, your first process simulation on Aspen High Seas in the description of this video. We need to set the composition of our fluid. So I go to composition and my butane is 100% molar fraction basis. And my uh, operating conditions is 38 Celsius degree and I have the uh, manometric pressure of 258. I have two ways to do that, to, to add this information. One is to add the manometric pressure, selecting the kilopascal G. This is the way that is informed in the exercise, but this will take into account a standard information or a standard value for atmospheric pressure. So if the atmospheric pressure is different than 101.3, you shouldn't go, you shouldn't proceed this way. You should sum it up 101 plus the, the manometric pressure to have the total, uh, uh, the total value of the absolute pressure. And I will proceed this way because you will verify that the total pressure is not matching with the exercise. Because if I have 200, 58 plus 101, I will have in the end 359 kilopascal. So this is my absolute pressure. And with that, I have now the vapor fraction as zero. Uh, if I let as was before, it was vapor. So this is very important to understand when you are doing chemical process engineering plan design. You must know what is the local pressure of the your installation you are able to set that in the Aspen high seas but if you don't want to have want to have any kind of misunderstanding misleading information you must add the absolute pressure strafe to the input of the Aspen high seas you can verify in the exercise that the uh, NPSH available is not a function of uh, volume of flow because we are not, in, not doing the pipe sizing, we are not doing performing the calculation of the friction losses. It is done, it is a given number in the exercise. 
So because of that, I will consider that the mass flow of this system is one kilogram per hour. Based on that, my material stream is defined and I can go to the second piece of, of a, a component in my process simulation. That is the pipe segment. First thing, I don't want that the pipe segment influences in the pressure drop of my system. Because of that, I will consider that my outlet diameter and inlet diameter will be 1000 meters. I just, I don't want that when I vary the flow of fluid, I have a pressure drop in my pipe segment. So because of that, I'm doing this adjustment. I will have just the eight of liquid as uh, information of my system. Besides the pipe segment, I need to add also information to heat transfer. And in this case, I have that my pipe length is 2.4 meters. And to consider this age of liquid in the pipe segment, I need to change this, the elevator change to minus 2.4. This is very important because a negative number means that my outlet is below the inlet. If I have a positive number here, my outlet is above the inlet. So to count the age of liquid in the pipe segment, I need to set it as minus 2.4, that is the same as the pipe length. And of course that my elevation change should, uh, should not, never be higher than the pipe length because it's not possible. So with this, now I just need to add the information for heat transfer. I don't want to complicate our life, so in this case, I will consider that the heat losses is zero. It is a, a diabetic condition. I don't have heat exchanging with the environment. So with that, I converted the pipe segment. And now I need to add the information related to the pressure drop in this fitting. Verify that I am not able to add the information related to length. Although we have calculated uh, in the exercise friction losses is given in, in length, I need to, to calculate that. I need to inform that as pressure. That's why we did the calculation before. So when we convert the information of friction losses in column of water to column of butane and apply the mass density and the acceleration of gravity, we have that the information of pressure drop is 8.8 .8 kilopascal. So with that, we converted the, the fittings. I have set the pump to delta P of 100 uh, kilopascal. It do, do not affect the NPSH calculation. The adiabatic efficiency do not affect the NPSH calculation. So with this, I converted my simulation and now I have the NPSH available of my system as 1.323 meters. That is very similar to the spreadsheet or to the exercise that is 1.4. If I click two times here and if I go to rating, I can go to NPSH and this is checked. So because of that, the Iceman High Seas is performing the NPSH calculation. Verify that this at the standard conditions when you add a pump to the, to the process simulation, this information is unchecked. So to be able to calculate the NPSH available, I need to check this information and with that the Iceman High Seas will perform it. Everything needs seems to be okay. The Aspen High C is matching with the spreadsheet that is matching with the results of the book. But let's suppose now that instead of having one kilograms per hour of mass flow, I multiply it by 100,000 times because here I have a volumetric flow very low. This is not the way that it happens in the industry. We have larger flow. So I will consider 100,000 kilograms per hour of mass flow for the N-butane. What, what happens when I do that? I click on enter. 
And now you can see that my NPS gauge available is 34.2 meters. And that for sure is a totally wrong information. And if you add this information to your specification data sheet, you will get the, uh, the wrong pump to your process. And that will lead to a lot of trouble during the commission startup and operation of the plant. So how we can solve that, how, what we need to do to solve this information to make sure that the NPSH calculation is correct or not. Now I will present you how to perform the second, the, the second way of performing NPSH calculation on Aspen High Seas. To do that, you just need to add two new objects to your process simulation. First one, I will use a material stream to simulate the vapor pressure of the fluid. And I added a spreadsheet to my process simulation in order to perform the calculations. So when I click two times in this spreadsheet, I did the importation of the suction pressure of my pump, the information of mass density at the suction of my pump, and I will get the information of vapor pressure of my stream uh, vapor pressure. With that, if I go to the spreadsheet, I am able to perform the NPSH calculation. That is the pressure of the fluid minus the vapor pressure divided by mass density multiplied by the uh, acceleration of gravity multiplied by one. And if I select length as the unit of measurement for this variable, I will have the results in meters. Now I just need to identify what is the vapor pressure of this fluid. To do that, I can click two times in this in this stream in this stream, and I will define the stream from the suction one. When I do the suction one definition, I will get all the information that is available there. So I will get the the temperature, pressure, molar flow, composition, everything. And based on that, I have my fluid as liquid. But uh, And with the same conditions that I have in the suction of the pump. This information here is the same as the suction of the pump because we are not considering a pipe segment. So to know what is the vapor pressure of this fluid, uh, the vapor pressure is an information based on the temperature of the fluid. I will delete the pressure and I will consider that my vapor pressure is zero because in this way I have I will be at the bubble point of the N-butane. When I do that, the Aspen High Seas will calculate what is the vapor pressure and verify that it matches with the information in the exercise and my spreadsheet will do the calculation that matches with the information in the exercise where the NPSH available is, is 1.3 meters. So no matter how, how much is the flow in this exercise, as we are not considering the friction losses in the pipe, the NPSH calculation must be 1.3 meters. And why the Aspen High Seas is doing the calculation and considering that the available NPSH is 34.2 meters. It is because it is considering the dynamic pressure that take into consideration the velocity of the fluid. But in the previous, in the preliminary calculations, we don't have the velocity of the fluid at the pump suction because we don't have the pump. So to fix that, we need to go to nozzles. This is a standard information for the Aspen High Seas. No matter how much flow you have, the Aspen High Seas will always inform the pump nozzles diameter as 0 0.05 meters. So what I will do to, to eliminate the influence of the uh, dynamic pressure, I will increase this information to 1000 meters, for instance. So when I do that, I will return to NPSH available. I will uncheck, check again, and now I have my NPSH available as it should be. 
So this is one way that you have to fix this kind of problem. In any case, I recommend you to always have the spreadsheet calculation just to make sure that the Iceman High Seas is performing the correct calculation. With this exercise, you have seen that you must take a lot of care when performing NPSH available calculation on Iceman High Seas automatically using the software. To finish, let me share with you how you can get the PDF of this presentation, the Excel spreadsheet file and the Aspen High Seas file that I used on this video. It's very easy. You just need to share this video with your friends and chemical process engineering groups in order that you help me to achieve 1,000 likes on this video. Once we achieve 1,000 likes on this video, I will share all these files on my Telegram channel in process where that you can subscribe for free in the description of this video. So this is it. I hope you like it and I'll see you soon in the next video.